WDAP Radio, playing music you grew up with and love to hear. Now, how do, uh, how do you see the first fight between you and him? How, how, uh, how do you see that fight? Well, I, you know, the, the fight, the, the fight, the fight kind of got out of control because he kept hitting me on the break. Okay. And so he he kept hitting me on the break, and 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 the referee never did warn him. Mm-hmm. He was just he will he hit me in the back of the head. He, and you know, he just he just. You know, and you know, with me, I was the good guy. So, in other words, I was no, I was, you know, eventually the referee gonna gonna get it. And in that whole fight, he hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. And the referee never said nothing. Mm-hmm. And he wins the fight. Mm. And so I go back and I watch the first fight. He hit me so many times on the breaks. And all this and stuff, and the referee never did said nothing about it. Mm. And so, so that means I went nine years undefeated, and then Red Bull stopped it. Mm. Then I, I go back for the rematch a year later, and you know, and I had the hammer, the hammer song, one more time, yeah, I'm gonna get mine. And so you know. <laughs> One more time, I went and got it. Was that the fight that was in Vegas? Oh, yeah, it was in Vegas. Yeah, that's where the fan man came. Yeah, the fan man. Now, now I got to yeah, ask you yeah. about the fan man. How did that affect you when that guy hit, yeah. the, hit the ring? Well, well, you know, as you know, when the fan man came in there, I was beating the daylights out of the ready boat. Uh-huh. And, and, and the odds was, the odds is Evander Holyfield knocked ready bow out a lot of people going to make a lot of money. And so at that time, the fan man came in, had both, he was bleeding for his nose, he was bleeding for his eye, and his mouth was bleeding. I was wearing him out. <laughs> then, then here's the guy come out of the sky, flies in the ring, which held up the pipe for 20 minutes. Mm. And then, and so what I had to do is, uh, Realized I got to so end up two fights in one night. Right. How, how did first, that affect first, you, champ? Well, it didn't affect me because the fact of the matter, I realized that it, it happened to both of us. It didn't just happen to one of us. Right. So, so going, we both had to make the adjustment. I made the adjustment. I come out the champ one more time. So I was a two-time champ. I know you 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 go through your warm ups and everything else. Um, I think Rock Newman was he Bo, Riddick Bowe's handler. Yes, he was. And um, w- did they say anything about that when it happened? Because it kind of takes you out of your progression uh, to get in the ring and then starting a fight and then having to stop and start again. Well, it's, it, of course, it was, you know, it was, uh, it was one of them things where you said, you know, almost two fights in one night to, you know, to, you know, you know, you, once you stop, you said it's over. You're so happy that it's over. Right. Now that they stopped the fight, it ain't over. Now, what's going to happen on this second, man? If you have so much time to think, you mess yourself up. Right. So, so you know, all I know that he made it to it, told me to say, you won that first, the first half of the fight. Now, you think you got one more half? She got one more half. Have you and ever so, talked to that guy, champ, the fan man? After all this, 
No, no, never, never. He never apologized or anything. What, what was his purpose? Did they ever say? No, well, no, because you know it's obvious that you know people got to wage their bets. You know, right? You know, you, you know, uh, you know, I, I bet you money in everything. Somebody waging them bets. And yeah. So somebody trying to make sure that that they ain't gonna get messed up. Mm. Now, what was your next big fight after uh, you regained the championship uh, from uh, Riddick Bo, champ? Well, I, I, I lost my next fight to Michael Moore. Mm-hmm. And what type of and, opponent was he? Well, he's left-hander, left-hander, you know, a very skillful fighter. And, you know, but, you know, but after that, you know, coming back and fighting right after the, the, the Riddick Bo. It, 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 it's kind of, you know, I had had a I had a bad bad shoulder, and yeah. Michael Moore just he was just quicker, and he was just you know I'm like I'm coming you know you know they they gave him the decision, but you know in general you know usually you don't lose them close decisions, right? But it happens, and you know eventually. We, we wait on, you know, it's amazing that we have been boxing all this time and Tyson was in jail. Yes. And when Tyson, somehow, he get out of jail, he ranked number one when he was out of jail. <laughs> so, 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 uh, so, so, back when me and Bo had the third fight, and, and Bo won the fight, that my first time ever getting stopped. I get stopped by Reddit, Big Daddy Bo, and 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 then I go fight uh, Bobby Chan, and and you know I was struggling with him, but I did beat him, and that's how I end up to fight with Tyson. Now you had a health <laughs> issue too, right, Champ? Well, well, they said I had one, but you know I I don't think it. Shoot, everybody had this thing that. He got a bad heart. Right. But when right. I fought, but when I fought um, Reddick in that third fight, I had I had got hepatitis. I ate some seafood, and 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 the man told me what's going to happen. And but I figured I don't. I work too hard for me to be pulling out on this off this nine million dollars. I won't get paid. Right. <laughs> I said, they asked me, what you going to do? I said, I'm going to pray and ask Jesus to help me. That's it. Yes, sir. And, you know, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't get the decision. Uh, and so, Bo went to fight, and, and all of a sudden, I get to fight with Mike Tyson. Mm. And, and they think of that. They gonna kill Evan Holter because he got a bad heart, mm. and, 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 and everybody seen that, and 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 that tenth round, I got it. Yes, got sir. Got him out of there. You you I'm weren't you weren't in, you weren't intimidated by him at all, were you? But no, uh, uh-uh. you know I've, <laughs> I've never been really intimidated. I've never been intimidated by nobody. You know, my thing I. And, you know, one thing that I did, I was a good fighter. I was always in good shape. And, you know, I had respect for the game and respect for myself. That, you know, yes, sir. I wasn't going to make myself look like a fool by going out here and not not in shape and put myself in a situation where that I would get beat up in front of a lot of people. I, I wanted to ask you also... Um... Before you fought Tyson and before all your fights, you, you had this look on your face that man, it, it it just looked like you were ready to take. You had that look. I'm. You didn't say nothing, but you always had that look. I'm about to take care of business up in here. Well, yeah, but you know the whole thing is, is that you know, it's not how you look, it's how you perform, because you know, you know. Being athletes or entertainer, you performers. This this is what you get paid to do to perform. Yes, sir. So it's not about feelings, these emotions, how you feel, and all that. It's about performance. 
you got to perform. Mm. And and that's the, that's the thing that you know me, you know what what's the difference between people? People who performs. Right. If if you're a performer, you're gonna find you gonna have a lot of envy, jealous people. And people are jealous about people who perform. I'm like, and, and performing is the hardest thing to do, cause it is. It, at any given time, anything you could feel a certain way, but when you got to perform, you got to you got to you got to be strong minded to be able to perform like you're supposed to perform. Mm-hmm. Can't make no excuses. Right. And so you know, and so you know, entertainers and athletes are the people who perform. So don't nobody know how you feel but you, mm-hmm. unless somebody who who been performing too, because at any given time, anything can happen. Mm-hmm. And you have to have you got to have the right the mindset to overcome the the difficulties that other people put you in. And there's always somebody around the ring telling you you're gonna get knocked out. <laughs> you know, all the bad stuff somebody else out there hollering because they want to get you to hear. Right. And so you know. And so if you start worrying about getting knocked out, you get knocked out for real. Yes, sir. Now you you also fought George Foreman. Now how how what kind of fight was that for you? Well, it, it, it was different, and, and the people made it different because now George Foreman was older. He was he was forty two, and I was twenty nine, and and you know and people you know people you know they, everybody knew I was a Christian, and George Foreman was a Christian too. So they asked the question, whose side you think God going gon' get, right? <laughs> and I said, Well, I said, we, we both Christians and they said, Well Evander, we gonna ask you first. What do you think? I said, Well, I said, Have George ever been a heavyweight champ of the world? And they said, Well, yeah. I said, Okay, then he had his turn, right? Now it's my turn, right? I said <laughs> I said he was in an error already. That he was great there. He should have came back. <laughs> he had his turn. You know, that's just like somebody trying to hog, trying to hog up the, the whole time of life. Can't nobody be able to go to him. Because mm-hmm. he ain't on that. <laughs> like, just, everybody get that turn. Absolutely. So, you know what? So, I, you know, when I said that, and, and you know, and it sounded like, and I became, a, and I beat him. Yes, you did. And so, but... But he beat the guy that beat me. He beat Michael Moore and knocked him slap out. And so I said, well, he got a turn. And then he got another turn, didn't he? <laughs> you know, I was happy for him. Yeah. Champ, now what about the second Tyson fight? Uh, we all know that the controversy that occurred there. But do you think it was due to the fact that Tyson could not deal uh, with your boxing strategy that you just continually frustrated him during the course of that fight? Well, well, yes. But you know, cause you know, you know, Tyson got that photographic memory. He, 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 he really liked to talk about his memory. And I just, and so, but ain't nothing like memory is up bad. <laughs> and so, he, and so you, he remember, he remember, he remember in, in in the amateur that that when he sparred with me that I I was strong and stuff, and he would tell people, man, he can fight. <laughs> like I'm that guy that he he just felt that he, you know how he gets it. I, you know, he got my number, this guy here. And so when you get a guy who believe that you got his number, you got his number. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> You just got to, you got to make him feel that way. Right. And you know, I'm talking, I'm talking, you know, and, and the, but you know, with me, I, I always knew that, you know, guys like, guys like Mike, at any given time, he got the punching power. He catch you one clean shot, it can be gone. Yes. So my, my whole thing was, is that, cause everybody said, then when did you know you had it? I said, when, when the man waved it, waved it off. I knew I had it. It was gold. That's, that was it. I said, that's it. I said, no, I said, you know, I said, I said, cause I have seen Mike hurt and hurt somebody. <laughs> I 
I said, I said, I said, he always, tra- he always figured that if I can just get one shot on the guy, I can get him out. Mm. I said, so you know what? I said, I know it's never over to it's over. I said, I said, I said, that's me. And I said, you know, uh, I said, I beat him. I said, and, and, and I said, one thing that, that, that really, really made me proud is because when I got to LA after that, after that fight and all the, the thug guys that ride bikes and all this, they were like, man, you didn't even run. You didn't even run from it. You beat me. <laughs> and, you know, they were happy that I, they said, you ain't stepped back now time. You went to it. That's where, well, yeah. Yeah. They said, and so they became my fan because they said, you know what? He didn't even, he didn't even run. He ain't even moved back. <laughs> you know, they just see everybody try to, try to get away from Mike. Mm. They said, you stay right there to her. You stay right with him. Right in his face. Yes, he did. They say, they say, how in the world are you just standing by my just real simple? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, look, I said, sure. I, I said, you have to prove them guys that, you know what? I said, now, Mike love to hit people. I said, but Mike don't like to get hit himself, though. Right. I said, now, that's one thing that I knew, that I get hit all the time. I said, but Mike don't get hit. Right. He don't like getting hit, so it hurt him, too. Yes, so sir. You start putting you start putting them licks on him like he putting on you. I said, I said, I said, somebody gonna change their mind. Mm. I uh, champ. Let me ask you this: um, How do you how do you see uh, boxing uh, right now? And uh, going back to your fight with Buster Douglas, do you feel? That he just did, he wasn't prepared. Was he in the same situation uh, that we saw uh, this weekend uh, uh, with uh, the heavyweight champion? He comes into the fight uh, 16 pounds overweight and not prepared to fight a guy like Anthony Joshua. Uh, do you think those simil- that was kind of similar to what Buster Douglas did? He got caught up in the euphoria of being champion. But did not do the things to stay being champion. Well, well, you know, it, I, I would say part part of it, but but you know, like it's a different thing getting knocked out uh, and, and making a decision. Now that guy, he he made the decision with twelve rounds. Yes. You know, so uh, so I guess he can say, well, uh, they, yeah, carried all that weight for twelve rounds. They, they 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 got me, but when you get knocked out in the third round, you ain't got a chance to get time. Right. You ain't got you ain't got a chance to get time. But but what I'm saying, but I, I understand what you pretty much saying. You saying you know when a person they become champ like Seth Vincent because because you know Reddit Bo asked me the question. He said, man, how in the world? You became champion. You were still thrilled to be champion. <coughs> I said, because I worked so hard to become it. Right. I said, shoot. I said, I said, I said, as soon as I became the heavyweight champion of the world, I had to change another goal. My goal was to, how long can I hold this thing? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's my whole thing was, how long I can hold it. So to hold it, that means that you got to work hard. You got to add something else to it. Because everybody watching the person on top. Right. So everybody looking to how they can get you. Right. I said, I said, shoot. I said, you know, everybody at the, at, the, at the champ. I said, so you know what? I said, you you got to be. I say, I say, you got to have clean underwear, clean everything, because everybody looking at you. <laughs> when you're the champ, everybody trying to figure out how how they can get the champ. Mm. I said, that's it. Do you? I said, no, I ain't have no power at all. I said, but you know, I said, by being, I said, I wasn't the biggest guy. I said, but I said, now I said, I had to outwork people. I had to outwork people because I knew that uh, size-wise, they a lot of them arms are gonna be longer. 
and going to be more physically stronger. I was, but I was, I was a technician. I was a good boxer, man. I was you talking about, I'm talking, you know, highly educated by boxing. I said, I said, I can box. I can box, and plus I can fight. I said, so now, you box when everything, when you get somebody to respect, then, then that's when you box. I suppose sometimes you have to fight guys to you. You got to fight a guy till you get him in a position where you can box him. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> Jim, let me ask you this. Are world titles as important in 2019 as they were in, in 1992? Uh, do you think it, are they as important as, as they used to I, be? I, I, I would say, I think, you know, to the individual self, because, you know, like, you know, some people, they don't care how they look as long as they win. Mm-hmm. And some people, I think some people are skillful, you know, just real skillful, going to do things perfect. We're going to do things right and all this. And some people just want the money. They can care less. Right. If you can make, if they can make all the money in one fight and just, and, uh, and they'll lay down for the fight, they would do that. Mm. I think, you know, my whole thing is, I love the art of the game. The art of the game was boxing. Yes. And I wanted to be the very best I could possibly be. I did not like losing to and nothing. I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, I'm like, shoot. I'm telling you, I, I don't know how to play horseshoe, but if we play a horseshoe, I, I got to win that thing. I got to figure out a way how to win it. Mm. I'm saying everything that I did, I, I like winning. I'm telling you, even when I went dancing in clubs, I, you know, I wouldn't let nobody <laughs> dance me. <laughs> I was, I was competitive. So I, I was, you know, I'm yes, like, sir. I may, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna tell nobody that I, I wouldn't let you do it. But in, in my mind, that you ain't not dancing now. <laughs> mm. Champ, in our and last I, couple of minutes, let me ask you this: What is the state of boxing uh, today? How do you see it? Because when well, I, 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 when I started watching you, it was on. CBS, ABC, and NBC, Wide World of Sports. Um, you don't have that today. What, how do you well, see well, the state well, of boxing? Well, see, and that's the difference. Because the difference is, is that when you have great amateur kids, you're going to have a great boxers. And, you know, I, I, you know I, I think that they never did replace Howard Cotell when, when the boxers over, they never got somebody who loved the sport, like how Cosell loved the sport and kept people, kept the sponsors uh, uh, interested in boxing. I, I think, I think uh, at one point in time, I'm for sure in the 90s, when all the black kids and all the Mexican kids was the champ. And everybody was making at least two million dollars a fight, and and that's when everything just started getting chaotic. Wasn't nobody, you know, the commentators wasn't wasn't saying healthy things about the fighters, and kind of made the sponsors to not to put their money in it, and it's sad. And then all of a sudden, their boxing moved out, and they they brought in uh, they brought in this mixed martial arts. And 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 now can't don't nobody do don't nobody know none of the amateur boxers so don't nobody support nobody right and so it, it, you know so now United States get beat by India I'm telling you United States lose against India what yeah right I'm telling you we we I'm telling we lose against people like that I'm telling you, if you were to say, if the United States is going to lose about it, they may lose against Russia or Cuba, uh, 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 Germany, you know, one of them tough countries. Yeah. I said, now, you know, you don't know who <laughs> who's going to win because you, know, you don't know nobody. Right. Don't nobody, don't nobody, ain't nobody just really into it like it used to be. Mm. So, and, and you know, so they they so they do need some marquee people to step up. You know, I, uh, actually, I actually really wanted to be one of the people and say, you know, hey, look, records are meant to be broken. 
yeah. how in the world y'all go not talk about when you don't talk about records and all this and then ain't no records ever gonna be broke. Don't nobody talk about them. Right. I see you have to be excited to break records. Tell people, hey, look, hey, look, like like Seth here said, I've been the I've been the four time heavyweight champion of the world for nineteen years. Mm. Nineteen years. Yes. I'm like you know, and you know, I was a cruiserweight champion for uh, 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 for for five fifteen by. By 17 years, uh, to this guy, this, this guy from Russia, he eventually broke it. He became he became cruiserweight champion at, at pen fights mm. and like this and stuff like that. And you know, he became the undisputed, undisputed champion. Yeah, but but I'm the only person. I'm the only person ever been the undisputed heavyweight champion to the division. Mm. And so, it is, so you know, so that you know, that still is it's it's hard for people to do it. Now, I did it, and you know, I, <laughs> I was undisputed, and both of them, and you know, and but you know, meaning I fought everybody that that weighed 190 pounds. Then I moved up to the heavyweight and heavyweight division, and you know what? And they were tall and all this, and everybody said, "How you do it?" Mm-hmm. I'm the most tested athlete for drugs, and they ain't never find catch me in no drugs at all. Yes, sir. Ever. I'm like, then they said, man, he he was freaky. So ain't no way in the world that guy could have been that strong. I <laughs> said, you, you should you should have just been in my area. You was found out. <laughs> Champ, I got about two minutes left. I want to ask you my final question is how does Evander Holyfield want to be uh, remembered uh, by people like myself? How, how would you like uh, those of us that admire you and have seen your career, how would you like for us to uh, see and think of you as the great champion that you were? Well, I just uh, said uh, uh, that I was the best in my era. And, 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 and you know, and, and we, had, we had the most successful era. Now, because you got to understand now, Mike Tyson was in my era, Buster Douglas was in my era, uh, 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 Menace Lewis in my era, and, and so you know you and, and uh, you you got five you got five world champions, and and and, 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 and in that era, everybody the guy was Ali, <laughs> and and everybody became champions, <laughs> everybody became champions. I'm so I'm so you so so when when you when you when 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 good people fight and then you you know if in 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 ten years in ten years I became the heavyweight champion of the world four times in ten years. Yes, sir. And you know so you know I, I you know I'm the only person that ever did did that. And but you know but records are meant to be broken. Now if somebody. If, you know, the whole big thing of setting the record that inspired other people had something to shoot at. Yeah. And so I'm not mad. I'm not mad. You know, I was, matter of fact, I was hoping that, uh, that, uh, Deontay, I, I was looking, I was looking for, he, he had a great chance of breaking yeah. Rocky Monson out of record two days. Yeah. They stole the spike from it. Well, like, Champ, we're out of time. T- Champ, we're out of time. And uh, I'm going to see you down at the Super Bowl, right? Yep, yeah, I'll be there. All right, I'll be down on Radio Row. I pe- I appreciate you being with us here today on Pro Talk. It was a great honor and pleasure to have with me one of the greatest boxers of all time, Evander, the real deal, Holyfield. Honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much. And yeah, Thank you. That's all for us here. On Pro Talk, I am the Mighty Oba. We'll be back with you next week. Want to thank Evander Holyfield for being with us here on Pro Talk with the Mighty Oba. WDAP Radio, playing music you grew up with and love to hear.